Recently in one of my live streams, which I'm doing every week, Monday night, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern, I went over a problem where I showed you how to do the right endpoint rule to estimate the area under a curve. And I thought you might find this helpful, so I wanted to show you that problem one more time because it is actually one of the topics covered on my Calculus 2 study guide. If you haven't already checked that out, there is a link down in the description and the pinned comment below where you can find more information about that and get your copy today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the example and I'll show you how to estimate the area under a curve. Be sure to stick around to the end. What we're going to be doing is we're going to estimate the area under the graph of f of x equals square root of x from x equals 0 to x equals 4 using four approximating rectangles and right endpoints. Then we're going to sketch the graph of the rectangles and figure out if our estimate is an underestimate or an overestimate. So really when you're doing any of these types of problems where you're trying to estimate the area under the graph of a function using whether it's the left endpoints, the right endpoints, or the center point, those are all three cases that you're probably gonna to have to deal with. There's really just a formula that you're gonna to wanna to use. And these formulas, all three of them, are actually on my Calculus 2 study guide. There's a link down in the description or in the live chat. I did post the, the links to that study guide as well. But this is one of the, the formulas on my Calculus 2 study guide. So this may look a little bit confusing at first, but Basically, if we're trying to find or estimate, I should say, this is the right endpoint formula. So if we're trying to estimate the area under some function f of x between two x values, a and b, we can estimate it using this sum, this sigma notation, which is to basically take the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x sub i times delta x, where your delta x is just your b minus a over n. So B is just the right endpoint of the area. A is the left edge of the area. So in this case, if we're trying to estimate the area from uh, x equals 0 to x equals 4, we're going to have B equaling 4 and A equaling 0. And then we also know that we're doing it using four approximating rectangles. So n is the number of rectangles that you're using. So in this case, our n is going to be 4. So basically what we can do is we can find our delta x, which is just b minus a, so 4 minus 0 all over 4, which is going to be 4 over 4, which is 1. So our delta x is going to be 1. And then our x sub i, we could figure out each, or what we need to do, I should say, is figure out each of our x sub i's. Their kind of general formula for x sub i is just your left point, so our a, so 0, plus i times delta x, which is 1. So basically, in this case, our x sub i is just going to be i. Well, what that means is we're going to start at our first x value, which we are going to go from, like this sigma says here, we're going to go from i equals 1 up to n, which is just the number of rectangles we have. So in this case, we're going to go from i equals 1 to 4. And we're going to plug in our i into this equation that we just got for x sub i and figure out all of our x values. Well, if we start at x equals 1, or I'm sorry, if we start at i equals 1, that's going to be we already know our first x value because x sub i, or in other words, x sub 1, is just going to be i. It's just going to be 1. Then our second x value, we would just take i equals 2, plug in that into this equation that we just got here to get x sub 2 equals 2. And then we would do that again for i equals 3 and i equals 4, which is as high as we're going. Because remember, this formula says we only go up to n equals, or we only go up to i equals n, which is the number of rectangles, which in this problem we have four rectangles. So we're going to go up to i equals 4, just plugging the i into this equation that we found of x sub i equals a plus i times delta x, which is just x sub i equals i, x sub 3 equals 3, x sub 4 equals 4. So basically we have these four x values. Okay. Now, once you've found those four x values, you can see the kind of sum equation that we have here 
what it's basically saying is we're going to take the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of each of our x values times delta x. So in this case, we're taking the sum of f of our first x value, which is 1, times delta x, which is 1, plus f of our second x value, which is 2, times delta x, which is 1. And then we would do that again also for our next two x values, plus f of 4 times 1. So basically, in this case, what we've done is we've kind of, you know, reworked or simplified this formula, which would approximate the area under this function. We've broken it down into these four terms, which if we can figure out what these four terms are, and then sum them up or add them together, that will give us the approximate area under that curve based on our right endpoint area or our right endpoint formula. Or I, I guess I should say using the approximating rectangles based on the right endpoint of each of those rectangles. What we need to do then is figure out f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, and f of 4. Well, to do that, all we would do is take 1, plug it into our function f of x, which remember the function that we were given, the f of x that we're trying to estimate the area under, is the square root of x. So we're just going to plug in 1, 2, 3, and 4 into our f of x equals square root of x. So f of 1 is just the square root of 1. f of 2 is the square root of 2. f of 3 is the square root of 3. And f of 4 equals the square root of 4. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 2 and square root of 3 we'll just leave in exact form for now. And then the square root of 2 or the square root of 4 is 2. So basically what we can do now is plug each of these four numbers back up into this thing here where we have f of 1 times 1, which is just f of 1, which is 1. f of 2 times 1 is just f of 2, which is square root of 2. f of 3 times 1 is just f of 3, which is root 3. And then f of 4 times 1 is just f of 4, which is square root of 4, which is 2. So basically, this is going to estimate the area under our curve uh, f of x equals square root of x using the right endpoints and using four approximating rectangles. But remember, what we also have to do at this point, uh, well, what you could do if you wanted to is plug this into a calculator to get a decimal approximation. Um, that would be fine for you to go ahead and do that. Um, I'll just go ahead and leave it in exact form. But remember, the question did ask us to do a couple more things here. It asked us to sketch the graph of the rectangles and figure out if we have an underestimate or an overestimate. So let's think about what the graph of this function looks like. So if we think about this function, f of x equals the square root of x, it's going to look something like this. And we are looking at the area from 0 to 4. So basically, we're looking at the area from here to here. So this kind of gives us, um, you know, the edges or the endpoints of the area that we're trying to estimate. So if we were going to think about the actual area under this curve, it would be this area in here. But remember, what we're doing is we're trying to just estimate using four approximating rectangles. Well, since it's based on the right endpoints, basically what that means is the height of our four rectangles, they have to line up with our function at the right endpoint. So if we're splitting this from one to four into four rectangles, we're going to split it at each of the whole number spots, right? So if we're thinking about our right endpoints, that's going to be here one, two, three, and four, which are exactly the x values that we got by plugging into that formula, right? We got one, two, three, and four. So what that means is if we kind of extend these endpoints, one, two, three, and four up to our function, and then this is going to be the right edge of our rectangle. 
So our rectangle is just going to then go over to the left edge of this little interval that we're looking at. And then same thing here, we're going to start at our right endpoint, go up to our function. And then our rectangle is just going to go over to the left edge of this little interval, which just goes basically to our previous X value. Then again, we go to our third X value, go up to our function and then go over to the left edge of this interval, which goes back to our previous X value of two. And then finally, we have four going up to our function, go over to the left edge of this interval and then down to uh, our previous X value. So that gives us these four rectangles. So now just looking at this, we can pretty easily see whether this is an overestimate or an underestimate because you can see that since it's based on the right endpoint, all four of these rectangles, you can see, go up over the top of our function. So you can see kind of this area up here for all four of these rectangles is being counted in our rectangle approximation of the area, but none of this is under the curve. None of this would be counted as the actual area under the curve. So these kind of shaded and yellow sections would be contributing too much area to our estimate of the area under this curve. Therefore, we can see that this um, approximation we got using the four rectangles is gonna be an overestimation because there's too much area counted in it. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button down below. It's a huge help to my channel so I can keep making more videos like this. And I hope to see you on our Monday night live streams at five Pacific, eight Eastern, where we go over the topics for the week and address any questions you have as you're watching. So hope to see you there.